The Governor's Cup, the name of the trophy that the folks in Lexington and Louisville play for. Kentucky shut out UL in the first six games, so they stopped playing for seven decades. Brought it back in 94. Louisville's won six of the last seven. The Cardinals have never led the overall series, and they are heavy underdogs tonight with an interim head coach, Lorenzo Ward. Took over last week when Bobby Petrino was fired. Mark Stoops, meanwhile, the slow build of Kentucky has wielded the program's best season in four decades. Every season under Mark Stoops, Kentucky has yeah. stabilized or increased its win total. A lot of respect for both those gentlemen. Low Ward, I've known for a long time. Very respected defensive mind in the coaching profession. At some point will deserve, or has, it, it really deserves a chance to become a head coach. And Mark Stoops, as you mentioned, has done a tremendous job at Kentucky, continuing to build each and every year. He really has a pulse on the program there in Lexington. The Sun Hall, the dangerous freshman back to receive. Kentucky won the coin toss, chose to defer to the second half. Wildcats are a heavy, heavy favorite tonight. They are out for revenge after a 44-17 Louisville beatdown last year. Grant McKinnis to boot it away. And for the 31st time, we play on in the Governor's Cup. Hall. Out across the 20-yard line, and not much farther. And there's your first scuffle with a helmet off. It's Louisville's number 53, Amante Caban, and here come the cards. I tell you what, we were down by the elevator, and there was a gentleman in the elevator telling us, hey, just kind of get ready for the, for the fight. And I said, no, really. And he goes, every single year. Well, there it is. He, there, it didn't, he didn't disappoint. There wasn't one pregame. But they didn't waste much time. I mean, a little. Slusher's trying to get one in, and Marshall's not gonna, gonna go for it. A little back and forth, but the officials do a nice job of getting them separated, and now we can get on to football. Well, the man to the left of your screen, and now center stage, is Malik Cunningham. It's his job for this finale. Jawan Puma Pass has been the quarterback most of the year, but Lonnie Galloway, their co-offensive coordinator, told us during the week, Malik is the starter today, and Malik has the job today unless something happens. You look at those numbers, one yard difference between passing and rushing. He's actually their leading rusher, as most of the year, the backup quarterback. Yeah, he is a dynamic runner who really understands the zone read concept. Getting him to throw in the first play of the game, and that was dangerous. Derek Beatty just about baited him into one. Yeah, I mean, it was almost early and to the end zone. Beatty has excellent excellent size. And he's gotten better each and every year that he's been on campus at Louisville. Almost got the red shirt freshman there. 31st career pass defensed for Beatty. That's top three of the SEC among active players. Part of a very good veteran secondary for Kentucky. On second down, Jeremy Smith cannot bounce free from that interior line. Calvin Taylor on the stop. Impact players tonight brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Andre? Yeah, Hassan Hall, 10-5 speed. We've gotten a chance to see him early in this ball game. He will make an impact averaging about four and a half yards per carry. And then Mike Edwards on the back end. He's a playmaker on that side of the ball. Returned an interception last week. 66 yards for a touchdown against Middle Tennessee. That was on the first drive of that game, an 11-point Wildcat win. Cunningham felt the heat on third down, and off he goes, scampering for a first down and more with a flag thrown all the way back to the 16. This is a big play, and it likely will not stand. A run of 33, perhaps to be wiped off the books. 79, offense. Yeah, the senior, Kenny Thomas, is the guilty party. That's going to come all the way back. What a dynamic play by Malik Cunningham. We talked to you about just how dynamic he was with his legs, how he understands the reads and his zone, zone uh, read concept. But right there, just a handful of jersey by Kenny Thomas and the officials on actually working against Josh Allen. 
It has been a brutal season in terms of the yellow flags for these kids oh, from Louisville. Yeah. 13 penalties per game on average in their last three. That's 39 penalties over the last three games. And a run of 33 turns into third and 21. And Hassan Hall gets a little bit of breathing room before a punt. Yeah, Kevin, it's, it's hard to go about your business offensively if you are constantly behind the down and distance markers. A team like Kentucky with a player like Josh Allen, you are feeding into their game plan if you allow those things to continue here for 60 minutes. Mason King will kick it to David Bouvier. King's 64th punt of the year. Gets it away cleanly. It's a short wobbler and fielded by Bouvier just shy of midfield. A kick of 35. Kentucky Wildcats at 8-3. and three. They haven't scored the ball terribly well this season. Mostly a ground-heavy attack. And a lot of that comes from the feet of Terry Wilson. They call him Terry Touchdown, the Juco transfer from Garden City Community College. He hasn't cut his hair since the eighth grade, and I don't think that's a surprise in that shot. Yeah, and they want to get him implemented into this game. Don't be surprised if they don't run a boot into the boundary here. Wilson. Off the play fake, he will toss it and pick up the tight end, Justin Rigg, for a short game. Nice boot to get him started, get him comfortable. Eddie Grand knows exactly which buttons to push with Terry Wilson. 67% on the season. There is a lot of growth that can continue with that young man. He is only going to get better. On second down, Wilson will keep it off the fake to Snell. He's about a yard shy. D. Smith on the stop. Impact players again brought to you by Chick-fil-A on the other side of the ball. Yeah, they'll get the ball early and often. The Lynn Bowden, who is a playmaker, leads, leads the team in receptions with 56 and yards with 575. And then Dorian Etheridge, if they're going to slow down Benny Snell today, Louisville and Dorian Etheridge has got to have a big big night spread the field out on this third down and Wilson keeps it nice fake and stumbles forward for the first down well, he fooled Tabarius Peterson the defensive end who went crashing down into the living room of Benny Snell but that's a nice play fake to see it read it pull it and just enough for the first down to continue this Kentucky drive Cats will empty the backfield for this first down play. Now this is when you love quarterback draw. Nobody in the middle of the formation right here. Terry will fake the pass, take off right up the middle as you noted, and across the 30 for a first down run of 13. I mean, nobody in the middle of the defense. You spread them out, no middle linebacker. Make them think you're going to the outside. Stumbled a little bit, maybe he might have even had more, Kevin. And a nice job by Terry Wilson to stay patient with the quarterback draw. Put Benny Snell in the shotgun right now with Wilson at the bottom of the formation. Well, this is when you get a chance to swing it out. Snell will fake the give to Wilson. A lot of different formations for Eddie Grant in Kentucky on this first drive. Yeah, he's going to run Wildcat. He's going to run quarterback draws. He's going to spin the ball outside to Lynn Bowden. He is going to attack this Louisville defense in every manner. And you see there the, the type of season, or the, actually the games that Benny Snell's had against Louisville the last couple of seasons. His best rushing effort of his career, over 200 last year in the loss to the Cardinals. 2-11 in that game. Lynn Bowden with his first grab. And a first down Kentucky as we say hello for the first time to Chris Cutter. Okay, hello, Kevin. Andre, DirecTV, more for your college football thing. Arizona State trailed Arizona 40-19 to early in the fourth quarter. That's Eno Benjamin's third touchdown of the day. Sparky has taken the lead with three minutes left. To My man will be proud of me. I got a workout in this morning. And I know Cotter got his workout in. <laughs> you two need a reality show, you know that? Hey, 
The man is on top of it on a day on the daily. Bowden after the catch will take the snap here and go backwards. C.J. Avery blew that play up. A loss of two. There is a flag down. Yeah, Avery was a safety in high school and personal foul. Automatic first down. We got Dorian Etheridge. All right. Well, actually, it's it's Peterson, the defensive end, who got a handful of face, Lynn Bowden's face mask. There were actually a couple of them in there that the officials could have called. But that goes back to your point in terms of the penalties, not only on the offensive side of the football, it's happened on defense and giving up just easy first downs. Out of first and goal, Snell. Not much there, D. Smith with the stop. One of 11 Louisville seniors. You know, this Louisville defense has just fallen off a cliff, Andre. A couple of years ago, they were 14th in the nation in yards allowed under Todd Grantham. Cardinals have given up 50 points in four straight games. Yeah, I mean, and you look, go to third downs. 51%, almost 52% given up on the year. I mean, you are just gifting first downs. Mix that with the penalties and hard to win football games direct snap to Benny Snell he keeps it Benny Snell is in touchdown Kentucky seven yard run for Snell who scores for the 13th time this year and 45th in his illustrious Kentucky career this is something that Eddie Grant loves to do you see Lynn Bowden go into the Wildcat Benny Snell will run the football out of the Wildcat. They come at you many different ways, and it's all effective. Well, that touchdown, Benny, has tied Carnell Cadillac Williams for fourth in SEC history. 45 rushing touchdowns. That'll be the last milestone we think that Benny Snell reaches tonight. Benny Snell gets started early tonight here in Louisville. Getting to the corner, out racing to Barris Peterson. Touchdown, Kentucky. Only winning you're in the playoff yeah. for Notre Dame and for USC. Questions about the future of Clay Helton, that program trying to get bowl eligible with a win. And would love nothing more than to upset Notre Dame's uh, plans going forward. 40 minutes from now on ABC. Louisville get to football for the second time off the touchback from Grant McKinnis. Let's check in with Chris Cotter again. Chris, what do you got for us? Nothing happening in Death Valley. You think Clemson might be okay because they get South Carolina at home, but it's a rivalry game. Jake Bentley finds Debo Samuel here. Gamecocks out on top over on ESPN. Wow. You know what you have to do in a rivalry game, Andre. You take those records and you just toss them you right find, out. You find a window, <laughs> preferably find, a high window. Find a window to throw, toss them out of. That's what they're hoping for in Louisville, where they have lost eight in a row. They got to get past the self-inflicted stuff, mm -hmm. and that'll allow them to at least a chance. Jeremy Smith on first down, and just about nothing, maybe a yard for Smith on the ground. Smith came in, he's only had 32 carries on the year coming into the season, but a nice yards per carry average at just under five yards. Big back at 6'2", 225. Good looking youngster. Season best game last week in the loss to North Carolina State. Cardinals ran it well, but they couldn't finish drives. Lost 52 to 10. Out of the flats, this is Jalen Smith, the leading Louisville receiver for the first first down for U of L tonight. Yeah, sometimes speed opens you up underneath, and he's an excellent deep ball threat. With that excellent speed I talked about, he can track them deep, but you gotta give him the respect, and that all he needs is a little bit of room to get started. They boot Malik Cunningham out, and the threat of both guys, Cunningham's running ability and Smith's speed created a nice window for Malik Cunningham. And a gain of 20 yards sets up the run for Jeremy Smith. Yeah, they want to protect Malik Cunningham a little bit and try not to put too much on his plate 
early in this ball game. Get him. We wanted to give him a, a, a quick hitch and a completion early just to get his footing under him. And that didn't go so well, but then he had the big run that was negated by the Kenny Thomas penalty. I say he's he's settled in nicely. And shift a pair of tight ends left of the formation. And Cunningham will hand it that way with Smith at an initial burst. Cash Daniel, Jordan Jones combined for the stop, a gain of six since the third and short coming up for the cards. And this is where you want to go right back to Jeremy Smith. Big back gets some push by the offensive line. They go up tempo and Smith got no push. Jones burst through the line and about a half dozen other Kentucky defenders were there to swallow him up. Josh Allen among them. Boy, look at it. You can see on his right hand a cast. Both he and Cash Daniel have been playing the last couple of weeks with broken hands. And you talk just a football player there making making do with what you have. Can't really wrap up with the right hand. But he is a guy that, that can play sideline to sideline and just plays like his hair's on fire each and every down. Played with a club a couple of weeks yeah. ago against Georgia. Bouvier calls for the fair catch and makes it in the midst of traffic at the 15, a punt of 34. Boy, Kentucky's defense showing up early and often with their leader, Josh Allen, making plays here early. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Jiffy Lou. You can do more in a Jiffy. And Chevy. Chevy has earned J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs. Two years ago, Kentucky was about a 27, 28-point underdog. Came into Cardinal Stadium, and on a last-minute Austin McGinnis field goal stunned the 11th-ranked Cardinals. And the soon-to-be Heisman winner, Lamar Jackson, had a bit of a waggish moment earlier in the game. He had a Heisman pose after a touchdown, but... Lost a late fumble. Cats drove down the field, and it's their only win in the last seven meetings between these two. Wouldn't be surprised if they go deep here early. Benny Snell with some hard charging yards on the first play, though, a gain of eight. You know, I talk every week about unselfish play, and I got to point out, C.J. Conrad, the tight end, with the block he throws, watch 87. Right here, just sealing up things, driving his man to, through the goal line and allowing Benny Snell to get into the end zone. Just love the unselfishness when, you're, when you don't have the football in your hands. And they love C.J. Conrad, senior uh, tight end. Yeah, I think he's an NFL talent. I think he's going to have an opportunity to play on the next level. Excellent hands, good route runner, and has gotten better as an online blocker. Little scuffle after the run of eight for Snell. And Benny will get it back. First down run and more. Shaking out of a D. Smith tackle before Smith finally brought him down. 11 yards for Snell. Well, you better bring your lunch kit when you're trying to tackle Benny Snell because he is he is coming to work with his hard hat on. And if running through arm tackles, that's not going to get it. You better show up in numbers and with some intensity to bring that young man down. Only needing 175 yards to set the Kentucky school rushing record. Started the night at 207. We'll be keeping track of that. How about some more? We'll get up in a minute and, and ask Eddie Grand to continue to feed him. He gives you the, the old spoon to the helmet. Love it. He never gets enough. He's a guy that is in shape and can carry the thing as many times as they need. Doesn't ask out of a game. So many times you see a guy break a long run. They're looking to the sideline and tapping out. Not Benny Snell. He wants more. 245 carries on the year coming into tonight. And he'll get it again. It's been all Snell on this drive. And he lurches forward after a play that looked destined to be stopped in the backfield. Kane pass with a tackle. And a flag is thrown well after the play. Oh, just a little... A little extracurricular going on. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 96 defense, 15-yard penalty, 
Automatic first down. You know, that stuff's not going to win 96 you. This is number 96, Louisville's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. It's not going to win you a football game. All it's going to do is get you a seat on the sideline, which is exactly where he's headed right now. And with Low Ward, the interim head coach, isn't going to put up with that for very long. Trying to settle the young man down. Get him, uh, get, get him to regain his composure a little bit. Wilson, he was looking long. He'll take a shot over the middle. It's dropped by Bouvier. Tomorrow, Sunday, NFL countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern. Sam and the gang will preview week 12 in the league, and they'll certainly be previewing the former Louisville quarterback, Lamar Jackson, and his second career start as the Ravens take on the Raiders. Look ahead to all the big games with your breaking news, injury updates, and more live on the ESPN app wherever you are. Well, he did work last week, didn't he? Ran it for over 100. And big then, one over Cincinnati. And then got the W. This is Bowden. There was nobody really near Lynn Bowden. There was some soft Louisville coverage on that play, and Bowden picks up eight. Yeah, former high school quarterback, only in his second year at playing wide receiver, and he's really, really improved this year. All the packages are built for him, the speed sweeps, the screens, the reverses. He is a versatile player in Eddie Grant's offense, and they love to go to him. Coming into tonight, he caught exactly one-third of Kentucky's completed passes. And we're going to Benny Snell right here. Here's Benny on third and two. Tripped up, reaches forward. Looks like he's got the first down, which is at the 30-yard line. And why not? You, you got a workhorse like that. You need two yards. The engine that makes the offense go, turn around and give it to him. There's an injured Louisville player. It's a Louisville defense that's been ravaged already. That looks like Dorian Etheridge, who is their second leading tackler, sophomore middle linebacker. Etheridge down, we'll take a break. Dorian Etheridge leading tackler last year, second this year, was very emotional walking off the field for Louisville. Really tough to see that, a sophomore to the sideline. And the Cardinals already just torn to pieces on defense this year, are down one of their leading men. And it'll be Robert Hicks, a true freshman, in for Etheridge. A lot more playing time for him, playing time for Nico Kiki, who's a redshirt freshman. First down, Kentucky after the injury, and it's C.J. Conrad on the floater from Wilson down to the five-yard line. First down, Kentucky on the big hitter to Conrad, a gain of 27. Yeah, you see the play action holding the linebackers and allowing C.J. Conrad to come out of the backfield, right up the middle of the field, two deep zone. There is a big, big gaping hole, one of the weaknesses of the defense when the linebackers step up, tight ends, slot receivers can get behind coverage, and it usually leads to a play like that. Wilson will keep it, try to get to the outside, step inside, dive for the goal line, and he is marked down. It was Tiberius Peterson who just got enough of Wilson, who was marked down shy of the goal line. Well, he really just stumbled. He got a piece of him, but you're thinking that Wilson... Oh, I think that's, that's a, a touchdown. touchdown. When they look at this one, that's six points. I thought maybe he extended and got in. Peterson does a heck of a job of trying to recover, but that's six points. Joe Ryder is our replay official, and this should be an easy call for him and the crew. Previous play is the runner's knee was down prior to the ball breaking the goal line claim. This play is now under video review. Yeah, this one will be overturned. If it's not, I'm going to stop looking. <laughs> Well, we've seen quite a bit from Eddie Graham, the Kentucky offensive coordinator oh, yeah. so far. You have the play before that. Etheridge, the best linebacker on the team, maybe comes out. Hits Louisville with a play action to Conrad. There's nobody home. Then everybody After expects Snell's going to get the ball. The call on the field is reversed to a touchdown. Instead, it's Wilson for six. Yeah, I mean, and it takes offensive genius. 
to realize there's a weakness. We need to go attack it right now. And Eddie Grant didn't waste any time going to C.J. Conrad in the middle of Louisville's defense with a pass and then attacking on the edges. So you're, you know, it's a punch and then a counter punch. You're trying to do something. Louisville's trying to do something. They counter punch with Terry Wilson on a quarterback keep that got him into the end zone. Kentucky offense struggled mightily on the midsection of this year. They scored 34 against Middle Tennessee with a boost for the defense last game. Two for two in touchdowns tonight. Yes, yeah, the play action that gets C.J. Conrad wide open in the middle. Then they turn to the athletic quarterback, Terry Wilson. He does it with his legs, getting Louisville on the board again. Here's Pitt College Football presented by Outback Steakhouse. Full moon fever in Louisville, Kentucky tonight. Cats have scored touchdowns on their first two drives. Looking to take a 16-15 lead all time in the Governor's Cup. And Terry Wilson's on the receiving end of what we expect is a happy phone call after scoring from three yards out. And Louisville needs something big to happen this drive. They need a score in the worst way. So Louisville is being coached today by Lorenzo Ward. Second game as the interim head coach. Took over from Bobby Petrano. And of course, that name right there is the one that everybody in town's been looking at. Jeff Brom, who had his Purdue Boilermakers finish off a 6-6 six and six regular season today with a win over Indiana. Jeff Brom has been rumored and bandied about for a long time here. And look, he played quarterback in high school. He was a cardinal as a player, as a coach. Coached under Howard Schnellenberger at FAU. Took the job at Western Kentucky. And we don't know anything that somebody else doesn't know here. Speculation at this point. Who's going to be the next coach at Louisville? As Cunningham pulls it down for a big run and more. Cunningham gets a block. Malik Cunningham. Is he in the clear? Yes, indeed. Touchdown, Louisville. Well, that resembled... A guy that used to wear number eight that was on campus here last year. Wow. Well, we talked about his legs. Lonnie Galloway and his ability to make plays, which is why he was he got the start tonight. They wanted some electricity in the offense. We just talked about they needed something big to happen. He delivered. Well, whether it's Jeff Brom or anybody else, Next head coach is going to have himself a nice toy at that quarterback spot. There's a flag for unsportsmanlike after the score. The result of the play is a touchdown. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number three taunting by number three of the scoring team. This 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. This is number three Louisville's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Oh, what a burst of speed by Malik Cunningham just a red shirt freshman and you're right somebody's got a nice toy in the cupboard when they get to campus here longest running play of the season for Louisville by quite a bit Cunningham from 75 out we got a ball game here in the Ville Seventy five yards on one play for Louisville. Here's the run from Malik Cunningham. Yeah, he's looking to throw the football here on a switch route. And then all of a sudden things come open. Des Fitzpatrick throws a nice block. Jalen Smith. And then it's just the speed of Malik Cunningham to get himself into the end zone. Louisville right back in this ball game. And one of my favorite, the Muhammad Ali yes. boxing gloves. Love them. Paying homage to the greatest longtime Louisville resident, Muhammad Ali. The only bad news for Louisville with 15 yard taunting penalty against Cunningham means Blanton Creaky has to kick off from way back, and Bowden lets it bounce down to the five. Lynn Bowden Jr. on a return, and a good one, all things considered, to get out to the 23. Monday Night Football, Week 12, is a big one of the AFC South. You will be there.
Yes, the Houston Texans winners of seven in a row. Two-game lead on the Tennessee Titans. 8.15 Eastern ESPN. In Spanish on ESPN2, streaming on ESPN Deportes, live on the ESPN app as well. Uh, that was happening in Houston and not in Tennessee. That was a part of that game, too, and it didn't go so well for the Texans. That's the radio analyst voice of the Tennessee Titans. I uh, think Houston Texans underwear. I'm sorry. You're, I, I shouldn't besmirch your name with that. <laughs> Texans radio analyst yes, underwear. Indeed. A.J. Rose, the running back on this first play, and Wilson will go over the top, and there's a whole lot of green grass for Conrad with a big bluegrass rumble into Louisville territory, 32 yards. That's 6'6", 252 pounds, and you see why. I think he's an NFL talent, excellent online blocker, but they have gone right to where the true freshman has gotten himself in the game. Actually, it's C.J. Avery who is in now playing the middle for Dorian Etheridge. He is out of the game, and Kentucky and Eddie Grand continuing to pick away at that portion of Louisville's defense. Conrad limps off the field. Justin Rigg replaces him. Tight end behind the left side of the offensive line. And Wilson fires one short, a diving catch made by Josh Ali. And I, I think... Kentucky when you look at their receiving core Josh Ali and guys like Lynn Bowden Dorian Baker Conrad the tight end they have weapons they just have to have Terry Wilson come along in the passing game over just 1500 yards on the season on the season it's 11 games played those are his passing yard his numbers to gotta expand on that 137 per game Kentucky in the SEC, last in total passing offense, 13th in yards per attempt. A.J. Rose knocked backwards. Amante Caban with a stop, and a loss on the play brings up third down. Yeah, but just to kind of put a bow on that, Kevin, it, it, there's, there are weapons at the skill positions, especially at receiver. And when he gets better as a passer, it's going to become easier. To, for Kentucky to run the football because now you're going to spread the uh, the defense out and it'll create better running lanes for A.J. Rose and Benny Snell. Kentucky can take this to the second quarter and that's what the Wildcats will do. Put that third and four play in their back pocket and head to the second with a seven-point lead. Touchdown, Terry Wilson scored from three. Malik Cunningham knocked out by his own man after <laughs> scoring from 75. <laughs> Michigan lost to Ohio State today. The question right now, who's going to be that number four spot? Clemson in action right now. Notre Dame to kick off in about 10 minutes. Here it's Kentucky number 15 against Louisville with a big third down on the road. Terry Wilson on third and four, spun down right near the sticks, and he appears to be just a bit short. Yeah. C.J. Avery made the stop. I wouldn't be surprised Mark Stoops goes for it here. Short yardage situation. You can run the quarterback. You still can go Benny Snell's direction. What direction would you go? Well, I'm going to give it to Benny Snell. Or uh, with this formation, it looks like he's going to be in the Wildcat and will carry it anyway. Wilson's at the top of the formation. Now comes in motion. Snell will keep it. Snell will pick up the first down, a gain of four. That would have been a nice little change up giving it to Terry Wilson and having him throwing one off the, off the handoff. Well, we've seen that motion now several times tonight. You oh, wonder if Eddie Grant's setting something up. I think he's got all kinds of tricks for tonight's ball game. Wilson is out of the game right now. Lynn Bowden will take his second snap at quarterback, their leading receiver. Remember, he was a high school quarterback. Sure was. Bowden will scramble, break a tackle, pick up about four more yards after that initial broken tackle and he had a good block by EJ Price the tackle yeah so it wouldn't surprise me at all if they line Bowden up in that formation at some point and throw the football 
Our offensive coordinator, Eddie Grant, I got a chance to go down on the field and visit with him before the game. And always had a great relationship with him. Tremendous amount of respect for what he does. He's one of the best in the country at what, what he does in terms of scheming up offenses. Second down, Snell. Another broken tackle, and there goes Benny Snell. Picks up a block and scores for the second time tonight. Well, he has a nose for the end zone. And when he came clean on the second level, was there any doubt that Benny Snell was going to get into the end zone. None whatsoever. Told you with his last touchdown, he moved into a tie for fourth all-time in the SEC. Here's a name for you. Benny's now tied with Kevin Falk of LSU. Third in SEC history. 46 scores on the ground. Now why not more Benny Snell? Your best offensive weapon, a guy that makes the offense go. Give it to Benny, let him get in the end zone. Two more touchdowns for Benny Snell, a junior out of Westerville, Ohio, who was at all SEC back last year, scored 19 times. He's got 14 this season. With a big game tonight, he could set the Kentucky career rushing yards record. And if he doesn't get it here, you figure he'll get it in the bowl game. Kentucky will be going back to a bowl game for the third straight year. Eight and three, trying to make it nine. Here's a touchdown, Andre, to end the last drive. Yeah, I love the block by number 83, Justin Rigg, the tight end, who came in for C.J. Conrad. He's going to seal off on Nick Okiki, and that'll free Benny Snell up. That gave him the momentum, and now it just turned into a foot race. A couple of nice cuts, breaking arm tackles, and Benny Snell was in the end zone. Excellent seal block, and then the speed underestimate people underestimate Benny I have yet to see him caught from behind he was a big Ohio State fan growing up wanted to go to the Buckeyes was a little under recruited has ended up at Kentucky this school that community in Lexington have fully embraced him and with good reason first offensive play for Louisville after the 75 yard touchdown run for Cunningham and this is Colin Wilson for a gain of two yeah, Cash Daniel playing as well with that cast, both he and Jordan Jones. Playing with clubs, as you mentioned a couple of weeks ago, and you see the cast on his hand. At least now he's got the fingers that he can move around to help him tackle. But that's two linebackers, both playing with Castle. Here's the tight end, Mickey Crum, the senior. Right into the face of Jordan Jones after the first down catch. Here's the other cast brother, Jordan Jones. <laughs> And what it does is it, it doesn't allow you to really wrap up. I mean, it gets your, you know, your grip on guys to bring them down. You've got to almost body weight them to the ground. And both guys, you see them side by side, a right hand and a left hand. But, boy, they are still playing at a very, very high level. It's nice of them to put the players on the sides where their casts are together. Daniel bursting through. He missed the tackle on this play. And it's a big time run for Louisville. And Wilson run out of bounds into the kicking net. Wilson will have to untangle himself after a run of 32. Yeah, he's another guy that's averaging just under five yards a carry. Came in with 174 yards, but he's got nice speed. Runs with some power. He's the more complete back of the group in terms of being able to run block and catch it out of the backfield. And he finishes with his best Odell Beckham impression, finding the <laughs> kicking net for a violent end. A little shove there from Darius West at the end. Cunningham with a seam, and Cunningham run down by West at the 16-yard line. Well, and that's what having an athletic quarterback can do for you as it forces you to play 11 on 11. You can't just go in the direction of Colin Wilson and say, hey, we're just gonna play the back. No, Malik Cunningham changes that dynamic and it forces you as a defense to, to load up and play 11 on 11. 
Louisville already surpassing Kentucky season average as a run defense. A little false start here, it looked like. False start. 83. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Fifth accepted penalty against Louisville. Kentucky still without an accepted penalty. Yeah, big Mickey Crum. They can't take him out of the game. He's the only scholarship tight end that's on the roster tonight. A couple of suspensions to Jordan Davis and some of these younger running backs. And Mickey Crum's the only only guy that uh, they can play tight end for him tonight. Lonnie Galloway told Mickey, you better be ready to play the whole game. <laughs> It's his last. He's a redshirt senior. He's in motion at the bottom of the formation. Cunningham to throw it. And got that one away to Seth Dawkins. Dawkins is out of bounds right near the sixth, the line to gain. And a first and goal situation is set up for Louisville. Like the poise of Malik Cunningham, it allowed him to set, reset his feet and just kind of get the ball to Seth Dawkins. Didn't pull it down and run right away. Kept his eyes down the field. Showing you some maturity from just playing time. This is a nice drive in response to the Benny Snell touchdown run being orchestrated here by Louisville. Jeremy Smith on the handoff. Stuck. Cass Daniel first man there. I believe getting Malik Cunningham on the edge. They're on the right hash. Don't be surprised if he shows it. He starts to his left where he's got to square his shoulders to throw an accurate pass, but I want to get a playmaker putting some pressure on the defense here. How much would that worry you, though, rolling to the other side? Well, he's done it. I mean, it's actually, you work more on it. If you're a right-handed quarterback, you work more going to your left than you do to your right, so it becomes natural to you. Cunningham under center, and Lorenzo Ward is out of the field trying to get a timeout, and he succeeds. Second and goal for Louisville, trying to make this a one-score game. Last year, Louisville beat Kentucky 44-17. Lamar Jackson ran for a buck 56, threw for 216. As the Cards got revenge after the big Kentucky upset win. I'll have a blue Christmas. Bad Santa. <laughs> he must have been still feeling the heat from last year. Part of the blue man group over on the Kentucky sideline. Yeah, smart play there. When does he think Christmas is, Sad Santa? <laughs> he's, he's a little early. He's ready. He's got a Snell Yeah uh, sticker on, on his Santa coat, I think. Looks like Snee Yee from what we can see. Hello. There he is. That put him in a little better yeah. mood when he found the camera. Blue Santa, red light. All right, third and goal, Louisville. What do you dial up here? Uh, go back to what we were talking about before the break. Put some pressure on the left side of this Kentucky defense, or the right side of the defense, Malik Cunningham's left. He's got three receivers that way. Cunningham pressured. He escapes. Heading for the pylon with a flag thrown well behind the play. There's a ruling of a touchdown. Well, this may come back. We will check the marker. Holding. 79. Offense. 10-yard penalty. Right. Third down. Got to get Kenny Thomas going. That's the second big play. Had the long run in the first quarter. It was brought back by Kenny Thomas hold. And then this one, a touchdown. Big number 79, watch on the left side there as he starts to run. Just no need for it. Just that little bit of a jersey snag erases a touchdown. That's. I mean, already six penalties, 64 yards. That's just discipline, you know, just being a disciplined football player. You, you feel a guy releasing, let him go. You can't reach and hold, grab his jersey. You know the officials, you know, they're, they're design, their job is to watch the pit and what goes on there. So third and goal for the 15, the ball is out. Picked up by Kentucky and the umpire is quickly in to rule an incomplete pass. 
Oh, they're going to get lucky here. And it was Kenny Thomas that was just whipped by Josh Allen. He went by him like he was standing still and looked as though he wanted to hold him or grab him, but he thought better of it because of the previous play. I mean, Josh Allen is looks like he's just out of a sprinter stance and around Kenny Thomas. Heads up play there by Malik Cunningham to at least attempt the pass and save the sack. Calvin Taylor almost picked it off. Leads to a 32-yard attempt for Blanton Creaky. 9 of 11 this year. And good from 32. So Josh Allen, no sacks tonight, but still all over the backfield. Oh, man. And how about Josh, who is the father of a 10-month-old Wesley Allen, who, in a wonderful act of corporate synergy, went as Woody for his first Halloween. Which reminds us to tell you the Toy Story 4 teaser was released this week. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. That's awesome. Youngster. And, that, and, and to, to think that Josh Allen played three years in high school football as a wide receiver before moving <laughs> to linebacker and starting to develop this. Those types of techniques that get him to the passer. He can bend with the best of them when he turns the corner. He's excellent in run defense, and he's also pretty good in pass coverage. He is the complete running back, excuse me, linebacker, which is why Mel Kuyper has him so high on his big board. Now, this is no disrespect to the great football program at Monmouth in New Jersey, but Josh Allen was a Monmouth commit, and that changed when Kentucky had a spot open. He went from FCS to FBS and SEC awfully quickly. Said he thinks about it every day, the fact that he was committed to Monmouth, a late bloomer and a superstar right now for this Kentucky defense. This was Lorenzo Ward's thought when he saw Josh Allen playing. Yeah. Reminded him of Clowney, who Lorenzo Ward coached at South Carolina. Yeah, the body types are similar. You look at the stats. I mean, they are remarkably similar in 2012 with Clowney and this year with Josh Allen. He's actually forced more fumbles than Clowney has and has the equal amount of sacks. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's going to probably uh, surpass Clowney's totals of 2012 in that sack department. And Kentucky with the ball, three drives and three scores on offense. And a keeper for Wilson on first down. What do you like about what Kentucky has done offensively so far? Well, I like how they've mixed it up. I mean, you've, you've gone with Terry Wilson running the football. You've gone to the Wildcat with both Lynn Bowden and Benny Snell. 12 men on offense. Correction, 12 men in formation, offense. Five yard penalty, second down. I don't like that. Nope. <laughs> but then mix in the pass, a couple of quick ones to Lynn Bowden, and then over the middle to C.J. Conrad, the big tight end. They've kind of hit Louisville in every way possible where you really don't have an answer for it because it's coming from so many different ways. Well, now Louisville in a rare opportunity of Kentucky being behind schedule has a chance to get off the field in a couple of plays on second and 12. Wilson's been very accurate tonight. Six for seven. Takes a deep shot. Bowden's there. A flag is thrown. And what do we have here with a couple of Kentucky players and Louisville defensive backs bunched together? I'm not sure of the receiver, but somebody just ran over. I think it was Bouvier who got knocked down. So that's where the interference flag comes from. But the, the amount of time. Pass interference. 21, 21. defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. The amount of time that Terry Wilson had to throw the football. He was back there just having Thanksgiving dinner all over again. Look at that. Look at that pocket just sitting back there. Tremendous amount of time. And then here's the penalty on the back end. You just can't do that. You just can't run into a receiver down the field. It was actually Marlon character who just lowered his shoulder yeah, into Bouvier. You just can't do those types of things. What, what does that say to you about this team? With everything well, we've seen from them. They're playing like there's nothing to lose. And actually, there's nowhere to go 
for Louisville after tonight. First down run for A.J. Rose. Mind you, the college football season is not over. You can still watch games on ESPN+. Plus. As a flag is thrown after. A whole lot more, including some great 30 for 30s. Or maybe it's 30s for 30. Not sure of the plural there. Start your free trial right now at ESPNplus.com. Unsportsmanlike against A.J. Rose after the run. Oh, that's surprising. Can't get baited into that stuff. You knew it was going to be chippy. It is every year when these teams play. But as a head coach, you just tear your hair out with some yeah. of these penalties. And now it's starting to happen from both sides. Second and forever. Wilson with a short one to Bowden. Picks up a couple of blocks. And Bowden breaks free of the tackle. First down and more. Stumbling his way across the 45. Trey Sean Smith finally took him down. Well, that's the window dressing. They bring Benny Snell out of the backfield and then go back the other way to Lynn Bowden. Love the game that Eddie Grant is calling right now. There's a 32-yard play. Michael Boykin had a shot at him, and Bowden slipped the tackle. That was the offensive coordinator, the mad, the mad scientist. Bowden is the motion man here. He takes the pitch. Snell with a block, but not enough. London Iacopo the stop in the backfield as we check in with Chris Conner. LSU and Texas A&M. First, Travion Williams. Has he had a great year or what? Ten yards. Great run to get into the end zone. Great career, to be honest with you, at A&M. But then, Joe Burrow. Look at that great fake. Hits the hole and gets to the end zone. 7-7, seven, seven, late first quarter on the SEC network. LSU woke up. That's going to be a good football game. Good game in Kyle Field. Wilson on second and long. And he is swarmed. I just want to hang out of the football at that point. That's a loss of a yard to set up Kentucky's longest third down tonight. Man, it was really a good defensive look by Louisville because it was an RPO. Show it inside, come down the line, and, and his next read was to swing it out wide to one of those receivers. But all he saw was red in the right places to take away everything. That's a defensive coordinator, Brian Van Gorder. Needs a play right here from his defense. Kentucky needs the 31 of Louisville. Some commotion at the bottom of that defensive formation, and this play is stopped before it had a chance to start. Second charge time out of the half, Louisville. Sets up a big third down for Kentucky. They'll talk it over. We'll come back with it. Lorenzo Ward, the interim coach, needed a timeout. Before this third down play, there was some quarterback confusion. Yeah, two true freshmen, Chandler Jones and Telly Plummer. They didn't want Chandler Jones on Bowden, so Ryan Van Gorder, low war. They decided to call a timeout to get things ironed out. Bowden's in the slot right on third and 14. Wilson flushed. Wilson chased. Picks up a couple of blocks. He'll just run for it and get hit up high. Kentucky sideline wants a flag, and the Wildcats will get it. P.J. Embanasaur came in up high. Yeah, this may be targeting. There's an official with a hat off, too. Yeah. Yep. Personal foul. Targeting. targeting number one defense using the crown of his helmet to inflict punishment on his opponent this play is now under video review EJ and Banasor from the secondary I mean I, I just don't at some point that that is you cannot do that that's what the rule is in place for but at some point 
some senior has got to grab these guys and say, look, we can't do this. Play hard, go all out, but you don't play dirty and, and, and throw, you know, just have plays that continue to hurt the football team one after another. I understand, I get the rivalry part of it. I get playing hard and tough. But when the penalties start to stack up where they hurt the football team, that's got to go out the way. That's got to be put aside. And I just After let's video just play. review, the ruling on the field of targeting is confirmed. Yeah. 15 yard penalty, and number one is disqualified for the remainder of the game. And it gets you that. You get one, you get one shot in, and you're done. And now he's a redshirt junior. It'll be next year in the opening game of the season for Louisville. He will have to sit out the first half. By the way, the opening game next year, Notre Dame comes to town. Yeah. And Banasaur done for the night. Eight penalties, that 94 makes, yards. He wouldn't get a high five from me. No. If I'm a teammate. I mean, who does this fall on? And there are only 11 seniors here. That's the thing. You wonder who is the leader right now for Louisville, a team with an interim coach, a young group that has lost eight in a row. Hurt, you know, anything that hurts the team, you that's dapping a guy up for that. Back to the ground base, Snell. And nice. by the way, that was a third and 14, just to add to that play as East makes a tackle. That's that's a punt coming up for Kentucky without the targeting penalty on that's the previous an, play. Excellent play by a youngster there, Rush East, in the open field against one of the best backs in the SEC, and he doesn't, doesn't let go. It's the son of a Kentucky Wildcat, Russ Yeast, making the stop. Dad Craig was a great receiver at UK. Wilson looking long. Now pulls it down. Now goes deep again. All alone, it's Bowden. Four scores and four drives for the boys in blue. Eddie Grant told me that the next progression of Terry Wilson's development was when he starts to throw the deep ball with consistency. Look at that protection. Look at the pocket. Scrambling around and then Lynn Bowden has worked himself open down the field. They pass off. They're playing zone. He is wide open. I think I could still hit that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's open the whole way. I think I might just be able to hit that one. I I don't know about you, Andre, but I might want to guard the guy who's got a third of the catches yes. this year for Kentucky. Kentucky's still perfect on offense. Four drives, four touchdowns. Lynn Bowden got the last one. This season, Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these. They still paint their chests, even with eight straight losses. The folks here at Louisville, they're on the national student and, section watch list. And even with the temperature, it's, That's right. it's out tonight. Go to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell. See if your school made this week's rankings. It's got to be worth a couple of extra yeah. points. You ever do that? You ever paint your chest? Uh, no. You it's should try it sometimes. I, I got a jacket on. Yeah. <laughs> I was the you once no, sir. In, the, in the middle of a phrase, but that was in a game inside a dome. That would be about the only time it, it would happen. Yeah. Still full of regrets. Chris Cotter, any trouble brewing in Death Valley right now? <laughs> the trouble is with Christian Wilkins because he got flagged. Look at this big fella. Into the end zone, strikes the Heisman pose. Wait for it. Wait for it. Well, you didn't get to see it. There it is right there. Is there an Outland trophy pose? That might be more appropriate. Either way, Clemson is up by 14 over South Carolina. We'll show you highlights of that one coming up at the half. Emmanuel Blotcher will join me. Jim Moore as well. We'll also show you highlights of this Ohio State win over Michigan. That was unreal and all kinds of other games. Coming up at the half. We'll see you then. Boy, 62 put up today uh, by the Buckeyes. Woo! Michigan's season in terms of playoff contention is over. Ohio State will face Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship. As we all expected before the year. Cunningham taken down. Cash Daniel in the backfield for a loss of three. Well, that's a guy that just loves to play. Stepped in nicely this season for Courtney Love, who was last year's starter in the middle of this Kentucky defense. He was just a special team standout. They inserted him into the lineup, and, boy, he hasn't looked back. There was definitely a hole 
left with the departure of Courtney Love. It's now a GA on this Kentucky staff. Daniel, the pride of Eastern Kentucky, has filled it. Only a three-man rush, nowhere to throw. Cunningham won't. He'll run, and get taken down. Boogie Watson was in there, set up third and nine. I like Boogie Watson, versatile linebacker, just a sophomore who can play both inside and out. A terrific athlete who was a basketball player in high school. And a tap dancer, yeah. hence the nickname Boogie. We can, we can get after the quarterback a little bit. Five sacks on the year. Cardinals have not hit a third down yet. Cunningham pressured again. Stiff arms the defender. And Odo Siva went backward. Des Fitzpatrick, he had the first down. And now is marked short. Well, an excellent job of just buying some time and then you see the athletic ability of Malik Cunningham. Just get this one off. Stiff arm and Jamar Watson, Boogie Watson, just to get it off. And he's not right. Limping a little bit. Louisville with just one time out left. I, I know where the ball is. Louisville's at its own 35. I, I get that. But... The way that your defense is playing, you think about going for this, you just kick it away and hope to get a stop. I mean, there is no bowl game in the foreseeable future, so you almost treat it like the NFL treats preseason games at some point, where you start to gamble a little bit, and, you know, it's half a yard. i got to feel like Malik Cunningham could sneak it for the first down. Even if he's out, you got a big backup and pass. 6'4", 231. Instead, it's a punt from King. Bouvier with a fair catch me. This is the last drive. Kentucky yeah. would score. Yeah, the, the chaos mix, mix up in coverage. And then the targeting penalty. And Lynn Bowden, he's so wide open that he turns backwards and is facing his quarterback asking for the football. Unbelievable. Now that that is the definition of wide open. And if it's not in the dictionary, they yep. should put it in, put that one in there. Kentucky's offense feels like a scrabble player just laying down bingos yeah, right now. It's a big picture of Lynn Bowden asking for the ball because he's so wide open. Eddie Grand just played quicks a tree on a triple word score. <laughs> Wilson completes it for the second time. Ali's got a catch tonight. Yeah. I like this sophomore in a Hollywood, Florida. Josh Ali for 21. Yeah, he is excellent in their screen game, and he's a big-time talent that uh, I told you, they, they've got some weapons on the outside for Terry Wilson. He has just got to come along a little bit more as a passer, and he's going to really start to have a lot of fun in Eddie Grant's offense. He is 10 of 11 tonight. 67% completion number coming in. One-on-one -on -one coverage here for Bowden off his hands. Lynn wants a flag. Yeah. He won't get it. I think he started looking for the flag before making a play on the football. Try to catch the ball first. This one's dropped right there. This is well thrown. I mean, it. you can't throw it any better. Excellent pass by Terry Wilson. He's got to catch that one, big guy. Chandler Jones was in coverage. First time Bowden's been targeted and not come up with a catch. A.J. Rose, the running back on second down. Breaks out of a tackle from behind, and there's a flag thrown at the end of the play. He may get A.J. Price. 52. Offense. Oh. Ten-yard penalty. Second it's down. It's actually inside against Jake Drake Jackson, and he's... An interesting story, Kevin, when last last year he's really playing well, but they inserted him into the lineup with an injury at center, and he's never looked back. It really solidified the interior of the Kentucky offensive line. 6'2", 303, just a redshirt sophomore who is playing some good football. Me and that line have been good. Unfortunately, they cost the Cats 10 here. Wilson second and 20, pressured, gets it away to A.J. Rose. And there is another flag down 
at the back of the play. Well, this may be a late hit. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Oh, my Number goodness. Number 98. Defense. 15 yard penalty. And an automatic first down. Noble's over 100 yards of penalties. We haven't even hit halftime. It's amazing. Wow. I mean, you can't continue to do that stuff. That was Tiberius Peterson with the late shot on Wilson. Picture tells the story. 99th in the FBS already, as you mentioned, over 100 tonight. I don't win very much when that can when that when that's when that's there. Rose. When we talked to Lorenzo Ward this week, we asked him what he tried to change. He said, well, I, I think a successful head coach keeps a routine the same. We haven't been having success, so he wanted to change the routine, make practices more player friendly, create some competition. Unfortunately for him, some of these persistent problems have remained. Yeah, and not enough time to really get it implemented. Wilson overthrew Bowden. Third down coming up. And that's exactly what Eddie Grand was talking about. Those are shots. He hit. 71. Offense. Ten-yard penalty. Second down. And Logan Steinberg. Steinberg here, the left guard, with a holding penalty. Two-year starter. But when I talked to Eddie Grand before the game, he said that that touch on the long ball, dropping one into Bowden there. When coverage is a little bit tight, now he threw a heck of a ball that Bowden should have caught, but that last one, he was even more wide open than the play, the previous shot down the field. That's when he'll really turn the corner as a quarterback. Wilson has space over the middle. He hits Bouvier right at the line to gain and just across it for a first down. 16 on second and 15. Sign of a good football team when you can overcome adversity. A, a holding penalty backing you up and then you convert to move the chains and keep the drive going. Still three timeouts for Kentucky. 45 seconds and counting in the half. Wilson to throw once more all day to do so. Rose with the catch out of the backfield and out of bounds at 37 seconds to stop the clock. Well, you have got to take your hat off to this offensive line of Kentucky. Just a tremendous amount of time for Terry Wilson to survey the field and find his check down in A.J. Rose. How do you know I'm wearing a hat? <laughs> There's some movement up front, and Wilson will not snap it yet. Still with three timeouts, so 37 seconds. Well, Feels got, like an eternity. They got Bowden to the corner here if they want it. Inside position. Does he want it? Yes! Bowden, foot down, touchdown, Kentucky. Terry Wilson's going to hear after the game that a Heisman winner said throw it to Lynn Bowden in the corner, and he delivered. Yeah, great job with the footwork, but they had him to the corner. The defender jumped outside, so he stayed inside. And how about this footwork? All you need is one in college football. Even more than got it down in bounds. Give him a little read route. Hey, the other outside guy's going to hook up at six. If he stays inside, we're going to the corner. If he jumps outside, he just stays straight up the field. And a nice read by the quarterback, Terry Wilson, as well. And you've got a Louisville defense that's allowed 50 plus in four straight games. Kentucky, with the help of some penalties, is just shredding him. Mark Stoops has a Kentucky team searching for win number nine. Season by season, it's been a slow and steady climb. Seven wins in back-to-back -back years, and every season under Stoops, the win total has stabilized or gone up. No other program in the country can say that over the last six years. Yeah, last couple of years, five wins, five wins, and then the two seven-win seasons, and then this year, he jumped to eight and a possible nine if he holds on here, and then they've still got one more in the bowl game that he can get to to double digits so what a season that he's had in year six and it just goes to show you alums across the country if you're just patient with a coach and not try to get rid of him in year two or three this is what could happen to your program
Yeah, credit to Mitch Barnhart and the athletic department here. There are some schools where Mark Stoops would have been gone four years in for not doing it fast enough. Kentucky ranked 15th. Could they get a New Year's Six Bowl? It mean a lot of chaos, but we'll find out where everybody's going Sunday, December 2nd, noon Eastern with the CFP Selection Show. That's a week from tomorrow. We'll reveal one versus four and two versus three in the Capital One Orange Bowl and the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Four-hour special starting at noon Eastern on ESPN. The unofficial kickoff to bowl season. What if USC bowls up tonight and gets one against Notre Dame? Mm -hmm. We got it gets we fun. got mayhem. <laughs> it's it gets crazy. OU Texas that becomes important for OU and then Georgia and a championship game against Bama. By the way, over on ABC it is seven nothing. USC early and here's Kentucky with Josh Allen making a tackle. The Wildcats will not use the timeout and Louisville seems content to let the half expire. We'll get to the locker room. Talk about all these. Penalties and self-inflicted wounds that you're creating yourself. Benny Snell Jr., 137 with the school record. He scored twice, so is Bowden. We'll break, then go to Chris Cotter and the gang in the studio. You're watching the Jiffy Loop Rivalry Series. Play for the Governor's Cup. They call it the Battle of the Bluegrass in some areas. Whatever you call it, it's all Kentucky after 30 minutes. 35 to 10. Cats lead the cards. You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Outback Steakhouse. Kevin Brown and Andre Ware, it's been a dominant effort for Kentucky in this first half. Some self-inflicted wounds, no doubt, by Louisville, but the Wildcats have scored a touchdown on every drive. Yeah, they really have. They've done it on the ground. They've done it through the air. Benny Snell has been big in the first half of this game. We expected that. And then Lynn Bowden, who is just really, they're kind of their Swiss Army knife, does everything for this offense. He had a big first half to go along with it. Two touchdowns for each. Benny Snell with a really big second half could break the school record for career rushing yards. Yeah, got the scoring started for their Wildcat formation. And then the second of his touchdowns, it comes right here where he's just right up the middle, breaking tackles, a couple of nice blocks to get himself into the end zone. And he wasn't alone. The receiver on the outside, Lynn Bowden, got himself involved early and often to the tune of 86 receiving yards in the first half. It'll be his second 100-yard receiving performance of the year. It happened a couple of weeks ago against Missouri. And if Benny gets to 100, that'll be the sixth time this season for Benny Snell. And Kentucky does start with the ball to begin the second half. Louisville, nine penalties, 109 penalty yards in the first half. Under the interim head coach, the Reds Award, with Bobby Petrino fired last week. And Blanton Creaky will kick it to Lynn Bowden, Jr. Bowden with a big day on offense and a big return. Good cut to get some space. And he's just a couple of yards shy of midfield. Bowden walking off a little bit gingerly. Well, that tells the story for Louisville, doesn't it? 109 wow. yards of penalties in the game, and 75 of those rushing yards came on one play. 195 yards of offense and 109 yards in penalties. That's, that's a big story to tell. Benny Snell back in there for Kentucky to take the handoff on the first play of the half. What would you say if you're in that Louisville locker room, if you're a Cardinal senior at the half? What's your message? Well, just basically, we got to play and stop the self-inflicted stuff and just play football. 
you know, at some point, yeah, it's a rival game. You want to be tough. You want to show that you're not going to back down from this team. But at, at some point, it becomes X's and O's, and you got to go out and execute without hurting yourself. And so that's what's uh, in store for Louisville here in the second half. Let's we'll see if we can start to put football plays together. You know, a six-yard run for Snell. Now it's another Kentucky first down. I don't even take it a step farther. At some point, another staff's going to come in here and evaluate this team. And if you're a younger player and doing some foolishness, you know, yeah, that, that, that'll be all part of the discipline process that's put in place with a new staff. Now, Lorenzo Ward told us he does not see this as an audition. He said this is all about these young men. As is custom with a new staff, you, you figure that most of this staff, if not all of it, not likely to be retained. That's just the way college football coaching makeovers work. And after a two or three win season, whoever's coming in here for Louisville has some work to do. Runs award long time terrific defensive coach under Steve Spurrier at South Carolina. Excellent coordinator. And again, only so much time for him individually to try and turn this thing around in the last two weeks. Snell stuck. And pushed back by Marlon Character after a gain of three. And continuing to go to the engine that makes it run in Benny Snell. Ever so close to that 100 yard mark. As I mentioned, for the sixth time this season. That'll be, well, we talk about Snell and we talked about Lynn Bowden, but the first half that Terry Wilson put together was pretty impressive as well. He's 14 to 16. He hands it off to Benny here, needing a yard and getting that yard. Snell fired up and running as tough <laughs> as ever. Well, you see the passion in which he plays with, and there's nothing phony about it. That's just how the young man is built, and every single carry, he is running with a chip on his shoulder and being overlooked. And a lot of it uh, was by the a team we watched today play Michigan, the Ohio State Buckeyes. And Snell now in the shotgun to take a direct snap. He'll flip it back to Wilson. Terry Wilson's going to go deep, one on one up top. And the ball was initially caught and then jarred free from Isaiah Epps. Terry's got a big smile on his face. He knows Kentucky had one there. Yes, he did. And I think it was Marlon Character, character that uh, actually came up with this play. It was in the hands of Epps. And he just recovered, did a heck of a job of just coming through and disrupting it, sticking a hand in there to get it out and force the incompletion. What did you say earlier today? That's the next development in his game, those deep balls? Yeah, he's been accurate tonight. You know, they get a couple of guys. Bowden had one, and then there, Epps. Got to hold on to those. And to flip it back again, Snell gives it to Bowden. Wilson is a blocker on the edge of some kind, and Bowden gets... Close to the line of scrimmage, might have lost a little bit. Hey, what Eddie Grant is emptying the cover tonight, isn't he? He is not leaving anything uncalled on that play sheet. Whatever went in this week is being called. The intensity setting up the next play. Love it. Kentucky's been excellent on limited third down opportunities today. Oh, he has got Bowden again. We got a linebacker and Nick Okiki. To, I'm imagining zone coverage. The seam is open to try to go too deep or quarter coverage. Now well, the middle of the field's open. Wilson's pass is intercepted. Taken away by Cornelius Sturgill. Sturgill makes him pay. Wilson stared it down and allowed for the break on the football. When you're in zone coverage, you're reading the eyes of the quarterback, and if you stay on a target too long, you usually pay a price. Louisville needed this type of play to start the second half. Marching down the field, thrown behind, or just a little bit too far in front, and Sturgill makes Terry Wilson pay. First interception for the redshirt senior out of Memphis, Tennessee. Formerly a Wisconsin commit. 
And a big play for him on senior day as Louisville finally breaks serve. Now can the Cardinals convert, get some points off the takeaway. Big time run on first down. Jeremy Smith into Kentucky territory. You gotta be encouraged if you're Lorenzo Ward, the head coach, with how your teams come out the second half. Caleb Chandler with an excellent block to free up Jeremy Smith. Keep fighting, keep chipping away. A lot of football left to be played tonight. Cunningham kept it, and Kentucky did not fall for that thing. Quentin Bohanna is nimble, the big, nimble sophomore at 6'4", 340 pounds, and the coaches just rave about his work ethic. Big old body in the middle. You see him there, number 95. It's tremendously quick for a guy that size. He had his first career sack last week, the one over Middle Tennessee. Penetration here. And flags fly before the play. False start, 77. Offense, five yard penalty, second down. Linwood Foy, strong side tackle. Tenth penalty against Louisville and first of the second half. Another senior. And they move their offensive line around as the tight end go, goes. Foy will go always go to the side where the tight end is. Hence the term strong side tackle. Yeah, they have strong and weak side tackles here, not like most teams which will line up left tackle, left guard, right tackle, right guard. That tackle spot's always moving as the guards move with the tackle. So they'll play on the left one play and on the right the next. Cunningham was a four-man rush. He got rid of it just in time with pressure. And Jalen Smith is swallowed under. Boy, Cunningham got he, absolutely crushed and yeah, he's still down. He took a shot to stand in and throw that one. Well, that's the end of this. Oh, my goodness. T.J. Carter, the junior, gets there, and Malik Cunningham is still down. And a flag is thrown. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 83 offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. And that was well after the play was over, and it was just mouthing. He's, he's being sent to the locker room by Lorenzo Ward. And refusing to go, and it, at some point, security will get involved in this if he wants him off the field. I mean, this is one of their 11 seniors. Remember what... Lottie Galloway told us, he said to Mickey, you're going to have to play the whole game. They don't have their backup tight end, Jordan Davis, who's suspended. And it looks like Lorenzo Ward's trying to get Mickey Crum off the field. Yeah, because it was well after the play, and I can only imagine what was being said or what was done. He wants him off the field. He told him to go to the locker room. This is a senior tight end that's refusing, and at some point, if you don't leave the sideline, we can have you escort it off. So a new quarterback, this is a walk on Sean McCormick, who got a couple of snaps in the Syracuse game and threw an interception on his first career pass. No Puma pass. It is McCormick, the redshirt sophomore, with the injury to Cunningham. Third and 22 as he steps in out of the frying pan and immediately into the fire. McCormick is dropped. Josh Allen with a sack, his first of the game, and make it team for the SEC leader. Well, that limb I went out on <laughs> about <laughs> him surpassing uh, Clowney from the 2012 season. For number 14 for Josh Allen. And there's Crum still on the sideline. Eh? And I can see him not wanting to go in because it's his last game as a senior. But they've already taken the helmet, so he's not going back in this game tonight. Bouvier did not 
called for a fair catch. And he gets knocked down around the 10. Good coverage by Devontae Pete. That look says it all. And you watch the ACC on ABC next Saturday, the third of a triple header on ABC. Sam Ellinger, Kyler Murray in the Big 12 Championship. Horns won the first edition of the Red River Shootout at noon Eastern. 3.30 Memphis against a UCF team that's without Mackenzie Milton after the horrific injury yesterday. Knights are still unbeaten. That was a one-point game at Memphis earlier this year, and then Clemson hit for the ACC at 8 o'clock. If you're thinking about, oh, I don't know, doing chores on Saturday or raking the lawn, do it before noon <laughs> or do it at midnight. Five yards for Benny Snell. C.J. Avery to stop with the first play of this Kentucky Memphis drive. Memphis has gotten close mm -hmm. the last couple of years with UCF. Just might climb that mountain this year with Mackenzie Milton out. You like Memphis without Milton? Game is in Orlando. Yeah. Remember last year, that was an epic, epic conference title game. Double overtime. UCF got the win, then word leaked out that Scott Frost was headed to Nebraska. Stuck around for the bowl game. Knights beat Auburn, and they still have not lost. It's a first down run for A.J. Rose, gain of eight. And he's got some playmaking ability in his own right. He's kind of a speed back. He's got some elusiveness, even though he's a taller back at 6'1", 208. A good receiver out of the backfield. A lot of... People think that Benny's going to test the waters of the NFL, and it may be A.J. Rose who's the back next season at Kentucky. Only a redshirt sophomore. Delayed handoff to him here. Rose for two. We saw him in the opener. We were down in Lexington for Kentucky's first game against Central Michigan. And it was a battle between A.J. Rose and Zaheem King for the number two spot. And A.J. really won it that day. Yeah. The 50-plus yard touchdown run on his first touch of the season. 5.6 yards per carry. Four scores on the ground. Wilson breaks free. There goes touchdown Terry Wilson to the Louisville 35. Wow. Talking about some wheels. I mean, he steps up in the pocket and still feels pressure. And a lot of green turf in front of him. Nice job of stepping up. But then he sees, sees the turf and turns into a playmaker. That is why he was so highly coveted coming out of Garden City Community College. 40-yard run for the former Oregon Duck. found a home and solidified things at quarterback for Kentucky. Looking long and he had a wide receiver Dorian Baker in the flats the whole time. Baker with his 100th career catch and first today. Good for a first down Kentucky. In four straight years Kentucky had a different quarterback. Patrick Tolles Drew Barker, Steven Johnson, and now Terry Wilson. But with Wilson just being a sophomore, that streak is going to break. Henry Femarua down for Louisville. That gift will never leave the box. And this will never go back in. It's Neymar! Rated everyone. PlayStation. Wrangler jeans are made for those who roll with the times. Like this guy. And her. And him. And these two. Whether it's play, work, or a little of both. New styles, great fits. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. The new LG V40 Thank You. The five camera phone. Dave & Buster's introduces unlimited video gameplay and unlimited wings for just $19.99 every Thursday, Sunday, and Monday. 
all-you-can-eat wings, and endless video games for $19.99 only at Dave & Buster's. I'm the play-by-play -play announcer who's in your ear all game long. And the more praise I heap on your team, the more excited you get. Touchdown! Now, you don't hear the upstairs toilet overflowing, and I don't mean with confidence. You wanted a bowl season? You got a bowl season. And if I could show up on game day, imagine what could happen the rest of the week. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem like me. Advil presents a big breakthrough in pain relief. Advil Liquid Gels Minis, a mighty small pill with concentrated power that works at liquid speed. You'll ask, what pain? Advil Liquid Gels Minis. ESPN College Football, brought to you by KFC's new chicken and waffles, the most delicious union of all time, limited time only, and Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. 1994, the first time Louisville and Kentucky played on the gridiron since 1924. The Wildcats have won the first six games all by shutout between 19, 12, and 24. And they edged the Cardinals to take a 7-0 lead in the series at that point. Currently tied, Kentucky and Louisville 15-15 in the all-time series, though the Cardinals have won six of seven. That run appears to be over unless Louisville can do something big late. Here's Lynn Bowden, wide receiver, former high school quarterback, and he shouldn't have thrown that one. No. And off the C.J. Avery. Off the back foot, late and across the middle, and he knows it. You, if you're going to throw that pass, set your feet and let it go towards the back of the end zone. He tries to throw it on the move, and it's not something he's practicing all the time anymore. Right there, you got to just set your feet, put it up. For, it's all for, the, for uh, the tight end. Justin Rigg, and he knew it. Knew it right away. And because this night hasn't gone poorly enough for Louisville, there's Avery who got the interception. They're trying to put the belt on him, and he's dinged up. He has to sit down in a chair because he got hurt. Yeah, they've already lost Dorian Etheridge, the, the Mike linebacker. He moved over to Mike linebacker and certainly can't afford to lose him. I respect the grad assistant who's trying to get the belt on him, but you hope Avery's just healthy <laughs> first and foremost. So Cunningham hurt on the last drive. McCormick, the walk-on, is still in at quarterback with Louisville at its own three. The play clock at three, at one. And the Cardinals got it off in time for Jeremy Smith in a yard. McCormick almost lost the fumble. Or lost the snap, rather. There has been some discombobulation for this Louisville team. Bobby Petrino was let go on... Sunday last Sunday two weeks ago as of tomorrow and Nick Petrino the quarterback coach LD Scott the D-line coach Ryan Beard the linebackers coach also let go so this is look. one that they believe in the young man is catching fire try to get one out down the sideline deep to one of these wideouts and he's got the tight end Mickey Crumb back in the game it completes it to Seth Dawkins for some breathing room before a third down this job there you can't hold it because you know pressure's coming in the form of a guy like Josh Allen he's pressure without Madhouse having to dial up a blitz can make things very uncomfortable for a young quarterback so how about this we saw crumb come off the field Lorenzo Ward pointed to the locker room Crumb <laughs> pleaded his case he got on the phone during the break. He took his helmet, too. He's been given the helmet back. He's back in the game for Louisville. Amazing turn of events on the sideline. Third and one, and there is Kentucky. Four defenders were there. Jordan Jones leading the way. And it's time for Chris Cotter to lead our way back in the studio. Chris. All right, Notre Dame leading their way back into this game, trailing 10 to nothing in the Coliseum. Ian Book. Finds Chris Fink right here. Just places it right where it had to be placed. 10-7. 
over on ABC. SC still leads by three. Meanwhile, Clemson and South Carolina in a good one on ABC, on ESPN rather. Travis Etienne powers in. It is now 34 35, 21 with the extra point. Sounds like Clemson's kind of taking control of that game. As you figured they might. Yeah. Loss of four in that last play. A blue and white octopus in the backfield. Eight arms, eight legs for the tackle and a loss of four yards. And Kentucky will set up in good field position after a Louisville roll off the punt from King. Wildcats having their way in the Governor's Cup showdown. College football playoff rankings brought to you by Capital One. Number four is going to drop. Number eight is going to drop. Michigan and Washington State have already lost this Number weekend. He's trailing. Number three in a battle over on ABC against USC. LSU at number seven trailing right now. Uh, this is the weekend we were hoping it would be after a couple of quieter weekends of the college football front. First down, give to A.J. Rose for a game of three. And then so you look at what Ohio State did. My goodness. Not only what they did to Michigan, the number four team in the country today, but how they looked in doing it. I mean, dominant on both sides of the ball and special teams. I'll throw that in there as well. I think it was their best complete football game to the po this point in the year. So can they leapfrog a lot of teams to get themselves back in the college football playoff conversation this is rose through the middle for eight and a first down Kentucky was perfect in the first half offensively in terms of drive finishing and Wilson and Bowden have both been intercepted here in the second half but a bit of a damper on an otherwise sterling day I get back to what you're saying with Ohio State. The question that seems to be percolating now is how do you judge Ohio State against Oklahoma? Oklahoma's not stopping anybody, but they had a great win last night at West Virginia, and they're right now ranked four spots ahead of the Buckeyes. Get back to that in a bit. Wilson's shot too deep for Dorian Baker. And that's the one. That's the one he's got to get just a little bit better at, where you drop those out of the sky into the hands of Dorian uh, a running Dorian Baker where he just puts his hands out and that one's in the end zone because that is considered wide open you get two steps on a guy you got to hit that one what do you see physically from Wilson on deep balls I think it's just one is his first year playing with these guys and I know it's late in the season they've gone through some practices but it takes a while to build some chemistry and opportunities to do it is another thing that really kind of stands out if you're only doing it once every once in a while it's kind of tough to get better at it that makes sense it does yeah and, and so if you you know, you're dialing them up and certainly tonight he's getting some opportunities yeah. to push the ball down the field right you know from seeing him week one to now i'm curious too what, does he look like a different yeah, quarterback he at really, all he really does he's he's much improved over the central michigan game that we uh we opened the season with in Lexington I think he has more command of what they're doing offensively definitely looks like a, a different different player at that position 34 points against Middle Tennessee last week 35 against Louisville here and a couple of yards for Rose brings up fourth down again these are not the best defenses Wilson will play get that but still he's been brutally efficient passing and running I mean this is Arguably his best game of the year. End zone a couple of times through the air and then added a touchdown run. It's the hero about a month back with a win on the last play against Missouri, a touchdown toss to CJ Conrad. Fourth and two for Kentucky here. Quick hitter for Wilson. That's complete to Dorian Baker, his second catch. Good for five yards. That'll do wonders for his confidence. Fourth and two when you got to have it. You deliver a strike to Baker to pick up the first down. Baker was suspended a couple of games ago for the Tennessee game. Did not have a catch last week. He has two here in the third quarter. And Terry Wilson's team will take it down to the fourth. Kentucky has dominated.
And Andre, yeah. you'll be there. And a sad day for the Texans community yesterday with the passing of owner Bob McNair. It really was. My condolences to Cal and Janice McNair, the McNair family. Mr. McNair gave me a chance to become a part of the organization. I've stood on many sidelines and watched a lot of practices with him. And I'm just eternally grateful for the opportunity. And they do a lot for the Houston, that community in Houston, especially the youth there in the greater Houston area. And uh, he will be, he will be missed. There's no doubt about it. 81 years old and the Texans first game without him on Monday night. Try to get a three game advantage over Tennessee. And he's Snell on second down wow. he is wrapped up. What a Ooh. tackle by D. Smith, senior captain. You want to know where the leadership comes from right there. Team captain, senior in their secondary, and one of the few seniors on this, this Louisville defense. You talk about a form tackle and how it's supposed to be done. Right there is an example. Seventh tackle for the senior captain, their leading tackler from Florence, Alabama. The kid who doesn't have the most ability on their defense, no, but is a leader and just a strong player. He's worked himself right into the lineup, always in the right place. Wilson to throw on third and long. He's thinking end zone. What a throw and reeled in by Josh Ali. Oh, Terry Wilson over the top. 32 beautiful yards. I think there was a challenge issued by Eddie Grand tonight to Terry Wilson. I'm gonna give you some opportunities to dial up the deep one in tonight's game. Let's just see how you respond. And he has responded quite well. This one was put up before Josh Ali got behind coverage to allow him to run under the football. And that's what I was talking about earlier, Kevin, when you talk about the talent on the outside. I mean, Taven Richardson had called his name tonight. And I really like that young man as a receiver. Josh Ali, just a sophomore. Isaiah Epps, just a sophomore. So when Dorian Baker exits and C.J. Conrad, there are guys that can fill those holes offensively for Kentucky next season. And that was Ali's first touchdown, a true sophomore. And everything's going Kentucky's way. The extra point from Butler off the inside of the goalpost. There's a flag down on the extra point. Big night for big play Terry. Touchdown Terry is doing it in many different ways. On the ground, through the air, three times now. John McDade's had a rather loquacious night on the microphone. The result of the play is the point after touchdown is good. After the play is over, personal foul, unnecessary right, roughness, number 79 of the kicking team. Due to the flagrant nature of the foul, number 79 is disqualified for the remainder of the contest. 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff. Luke Fortner ejected for Kentucky. Wildcats up 32, don't want that. They do want this, the first touchdown for Josh Ali. Touchdown throw, Terry Wilson to Josh Ali. Kentucky looking to break a 15-15 deadlock in the Governor's Cup rivalry series. Some call it the battle for the bluegrass. Some would like to call it the Bourbon Bowl. <laughs> it's all Kentucky right now. A couple of days after Thanksgiving. What is that shirt? The gentleman in the white hat just ducked down a little bit for us. It was like a double-sided UK Louisville nice. shirt. Supporting both, half, half Kentucky there and half UK. There you go. Oh, clash of the champions. All right, I like that. That's nice. Perhaps a basketball-centric shirt with the two fine programs. Here in the Bluegrass States. Grant McInnes with a short kick after the personal foul penalty and the point after try Hassan Hall is wrapped up and we can check in once more
with Chris Cotter. Chris. Well, last time we spoke, it looked like Clemson was taking charge of this game in Death Valley. They further solidify their position here. Tavian Feaster scores. 42-21, Tigers on top in the third. Meanwhile, LSU at Texas A&M. Justin Jefferson hauling in this pass from Joe Burrow. That's a great catch. All knotted up at 17 on the SEC Network. They've gone to the half of the Coliseum. SC by three over on ABC. Isn't that sort of a must win for A&M in year one for Jimbo Fisher? You know, the, the hype, the contract. They got rid of Kevin Sumlin going seven and five last year. And oh, no. Oh, boy. That was the walk on McCormick with a beautiful rainbow throw, and it was dropped by the freshman 2 2 Atwell. He's a high school quarterback, all 5'9, 156 pounds. And that's one he's got to catch on the money for McCormick. I think he was seeing the end zone before seeing the ball into his hands there. So, Andre, we have a, an interesting development here with McCormick in the game. Some folks tuning in now might wonder why is the walk-on and the third stringer Sean McCormick in? Well, Malik Cunningham's been out for a couple of drives now. He's been getting treatment over the sideline. McCormick is sacked. Free rusher up the middle was Chris Oates. A true freshman with his second set. So just to finish this point, Puma Pass has been the starter most of the year for Louisville. And no word on why Puma's not in the game, but, and this is where it gets really weird. Puma's dad, Maurice Pass, has posted on Twitter, my son Puma Pass is out with an ankle injury, but I see they don't want to tell y'all. So that's the only information we have. Puma Pass's dad, saying his son's out with an ankle injury. We don't know if that's true or not. No word has come down, but it's the walk-on McCormick in with Cunningham out. And McCormick stepping up and getting taken down by Allen on third down. So a bizarre day uh, appears to get even more bizarre for Louisville in this season finale. Allen, you'd swear he's got, you know, eight arms the way he rushes the passer in the form of an octopus. His all over the place making tackles and just reeling them in love it fair catch made by bouvier it's a night where you have multiple octopus references anything <laughs> is possible in the bluegrass 20 years ago, Tim Couch authored Kentucky to a 68-34 win in the highest scoring game in the history of the Governor's Cup. Threw for 498, seven touchdowns, 801 yards, a school record for Kentucky in that game. And this is the Jiffy Lube rivalry series, and this is what they play for. Couch still looks like he can play. Yeah, he does. Number one pick right after that. What was the best trophy you played for at Houston? The Bayou Bucket. Come on now. Against Rice, Crosstown Rival. Is that your favorite rivalry? No, not back then. It was it was Texas at that point. We were in the Southwest Conference together, so. Oh yeah. AJ Rose with a stick. There's a flag down. Whatever happened to that Houston, Texas rivalry? Well, they uh, decided they weren't gonna Holy play Holy. as 66. <laughs> Offense. <laughs> Tender penalty. First down. Let's see Watkins called to the hole. They decide they're not going to play a lot of schools yeah. anymore in the, in the state of Texas. They're going to play Oklahoma again next week. There is Puma Pass. Now, we have been told by the school that Pass is injured. They did not want to get into specifics, but they've passed on the word that he is hurt and therefore unavailable. So no Cunningham, no Pass. The guy who was going to be the third stringer was Jordan Travis. He transferred a few weeks ago, and so it's McCormick, a walk-on from Darien, Illinois, who's come on in relief. Sort of the way this season has gone for Louisville, which needs a miracle to avoid an eighth straight loss to end the year. Terry Wilson. Oh, I love the composure. Love it. Feeling the rush, not really escaping the pocket until you have to and then the eyes were still down the field looking for re for a receiver before he stepped out of bounds look at the numbers look what he has done tonight 
Saving his best for last, Kevin. Slow and steady progression for Terry this season, who has been replaced at times in games by Gunnar Holt. Holt's played in four games, the backup. But the job has been Terry's all year. Big hole on this run, and there goes A.J. Rose with game-breaking speed. A.J. Rose with a sideline hug and a Kentucky touchdown. 75 yards. Just a sophomore, Terry Wilson. Just a sophomore. A lot of weapons coming back in 2019 for the Kentucky Wildcats. And they still have a game, a bowl game in which to play. Can't help but, like, look into the future. Well, who's coming back? Who's returning? Yeah. They've got two seniors on the offensive line. But Darian Kennard has manned the right tackle spot tonight, who is a true freshman. And everybody else on the left side from the center, Drake Jackson, and left, they'll be back next season. You know, it's going to be a very different Kentucky team, it seems, next year. They lose a bunch of starters in the secondary. You figure Betty Snell is likely gone as a junior, but they got some good young skill players on offense. Yeah, like A.J. Rose here, he found a nice crease, and then he was, hey, I'm going to turn on the juice. Down the sideline and into the end zone goes A.J. Rose. Six. Eight extra points, one field goal in total tonight. And Kentucky sits seven of those PATs. Lorenzo Ward, the interim coach in this Louisville team. We're two and one with wins over Indiana State and Western Kentucky, and they drop every ACC game. Meanwhile, the Wildcats are in the midst of their best season in more than four decades. Last time Kentucky had a winning record in the SEC, 1977. Last time the Wildcats won nine regular season games. Apple Computer was a thing. Star Wars opened at theirs. Whatever happened to that movie? The Supremes and Elvis Presley said goodbye to a different extent. That. What, Star Wars? Yes. Han shot first. Uh, Atari was first on the market in terms of gaming consoles. I'm not sure what was more popular. The movie or the soundtrack. I can add one theater. of that list. Yeah, what do you got? The Dickinson Gators won the 1977 state championship in our, at our high school. Yeah, I was, I was getting to that. How about that? All right. I'm going to add one to it. It's good of you to do so. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, they took one on the chin yesterday to North Shore. Which Did they eliminated them from the uh, from the playoffs? Good yeah, run. Season's over, but it was it was a good run. Good run for the Gators. Star Wars, by the way, would go on to lose Best Picture to Annie Hall in one of the great Best Picture races in Oscar history. Some might say. We didn't ask for my vote back then. What would you have voted for? Uh, Star Wars. Come on. I know. Out of the flats. This is Hall. With a walk on McCormick in at quarterback. What's, what's the best Star Wars? What's your favorite Star Wars? Ooh, it was tough to top the first one. I know, by the way, folks, I know, but it's 49 10. Well, I'm going to get Andre's first <laughs> favorite Star Wars. It, it was tough to top the first one, to be quite honest. It was, it was pretty good. The newness of it, the vision, and you look back years later and just how the genius of George Lucas of, uh, of putting those together is amazing. Have you seen the new ones? All but uh, the 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 latest. You didn't see Solo. Han Solo. Solo that, that was, Star Wars. That's, we gotta, that's the only one. So we got to get you a Blu-ray copy of that. It's the only one I have not had a chance to see. Third and two, right near the sticks. Should be enough for a first down. On the run, Hassan Hall. This, by the way, is a true freshman that the folks at Louisville very much like. You wonder what the roster is going to look like after this year with the new coaching staff in. Hall, they hope, is a big part of it. He was a 10 300 meter kid at high school, and they flipped him from Syracuse in the recruiting process. Yeah, he's an excellent kick returner as well. Took one 93 yards against Clemson to the house. He's got tremendous speed. They love that about him, and he's going to add a few pounds here in the next couple of years. Six feet, 186. Maynard Jackson High School in Atlanta. And broke a tackle in the backfield there. Nice job to get two. Where is the future Louisville football? Everybody in town here has Jeff Brom's name at the top of their list. Vince Tyra 
He says he has a short list of about five names. It stands to reason that Brown would be on it, the former Louisville player and coach who's currently the head coach at Purdue. Again, this is just us putting the dots together. It makes sense that Jeff Brown would be looked at. The question is, does Jeff Brown want to leave Purdue for Louisville right now? Just so we're on the subject, Neil Brown at Troy, I think would be a great fit here at Louisville. Luke Fickle and Cincy. Mike Norvell at Memphis, who's put together a couple of great seasons in getting to the AAC championship game. And then, yeah, your alma mater, Dino Babers. Would he go within the within conference and nah, nah. come south to Louisville? He's the athletic director there against Tyra. Big decision awaits him on who's going to be the next head football coach here. It looks like, and it's very early, but it looks like they made a great basketball hire with Chris Mack from Xavier. And they hit another one on the football side. McCormick's pass reeled in by Devontae Pete. And he's a yard shy of a first down. Is there a type of coach you think could best succeed here? Well, I think based on, you really have to look at the roster and what's been recruited to to the school in terms of both offense and defense and what fits with what you've recruited to the last couple of years. And so like, it, I wouldn't go get somebody that runs a pro style offense with, with spread personnel. That takes even longer to weed those players out and get the personnel in that you want. So I would go down the road of someone that uh, has a spread background. McCormick on fourth and one with the play fake. Long down the field and incomplete to Smith. And you can kind of argue that, well, that was Bobby Petrino's system, you know, the pro-style offense. Well, yes and no, because Lamar Jackson forced a change here on campus. Another well, defensive stop for UK. Yeah, a little underthrown here, and we'll be back in a sec. Implications. The deck shuffled here in week 13. New quarterback, Gunnar Hoke for a Kentucky new running back, Kavosi Smoke. You have the Hoke and Smoke combination in the backfield for a gain of two. It's getting late, isn't it? <laughs> and their names rhyme, it's 49-10, I'm not gonna not say it. Yeah, I know it. Gutter Hoke, fifth appearance. We saw him week one come in at the end of the first half, throw a touchdown to put Kentucky ahead of Central Michigan. Here and there provided a spark this year, 13 for 26, couple of touchdowns, and a pick in four games. Highly recruited ESPN's number 14 quarterback nationally and 12th overall prospect in the state of Ohio out of high school. Uh, Dublin Kaufman High School, which has produced quite a few great quarterbacks, including Brady Quinn. Oh, what D. Smith is putting together some second half here. A senior out of Florence, Alabama. Has, has he? He has not stopped playing. He was stated that way. Took on nice tackles here late. Eight in the game, 73 on the year. Their leading tackler for Louisville. You, know, you see that intensity in Eddie Grand's eyes still going at it. Got the youngsters in coaching them up now. Chance to get. Some run for the second and third string in the Governor's Cup game. This is not the way it's gone in recent years for Kentucky, which has lost six of seven to Louisville, including a 44-17 drubbing last year. And look, you knew coming into this game with the way these seasons have gone, something like this was possible. You also knew it's a rivalry game. Maybe Louisville comes out with some extra fire. And yeah. outside of that long touchdown run by Cunningham, not much positive fire for the Cards. All right. Started with Benny Snell and then then Bowden got involved and Terry Wills played hit the best game. I, was, I think his best game of the season tonight at the right time. And a benefit from some extra bowl practices. Fourth and two there is Kavosi Smoke leaving behind a trail inside the five. He's in. 37 yards and Kavosi Smoke, the freshman, is on the board for Kentucky. Take a look to see if he stretched out and got the pylon. 
Officials seem to think so. Review every play in college football, but how about this running through this tackle? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a heck of an effort. That's the first action of Kavosi Smoke's Kentucky career. You can keep the red shirt with the new rule this year. No danger of burning that on his first Kentucky drive. He runs it four for 45 and a score. Everything's coming up UK. Mark Stoops and his defensive coordinator, Matt House, chatting it up after another Kentucky touchdown. Wildcats should move up in the college football playoff rankings this week, then a week from tomorrow. It's the CFP selection show. We'll find out the top four. We'll find out who's in the New Year's Six Bowl games. Noon Eastern, a four-hour affair with Reese Davis and crew. Jam-packed selection shows. We set the bowls for 2018-19. Kavosi Smoke with the first carries of his career. Puts Kentucky in the end zone for an eighth time, and you see on the book, seven games out of 12 this year where Louisville has allowed 50 points defensively, five in a row. It has been a nightmarish season for Louisville defensively, and it's going to end in four minutes and 40 seconds for the Cards. Well, just a rough... Rough season, rough 2018 season for Louisville. And I, you know, you, they lost a lot of talent with nine starters on the defensive side of the ball. You lose a dynamic playmaker like Lamar Jackson, but nobody saw this coming. This was seen as in preseason projections, for the most part, a middle of the road ACC team this year. Bobby Petrino talked before the year about how this offense might be better than last year. And they just never got it going. Lost to Alabama in week one. That's excusable. Everybody loses to Alabama. Beat Indiana State, squeaked by Western Kentucky, and for the most part have been run out of the stadium by ACC competition. It's been a rough last few weeks for this team. On the bright side, though, if you're a Kentucky fan, and there are a whole lot of them left in Cardinal Stadium, you're looking ahead to a chance at a 10-win season which would be just the third in Kentucky football history. Question now is where will that bowl game be? Wildcats started out 5-0, and and that's the sort of thing that's happened in recent years. Yeah. Kentucky starts hot and then fades down the stretch. The loss to A&M for the Wildcats. Come back, beat Vandy, beat Mizzou in controversial fashion. Two losses to Georgia, Tennessee, and they'll end with two wins. Now, there were two indicators in that, that first five weeks that kind of let you know that they were going to be for real. And there's the bowl projections for Kentucky this year. Citrus Bowl and the Outback Bowl. But the game against Florida, which they knew they had to get over that hurdle. How about this run? Jeremy Smith, the senior. Pulled down from behind by Yusuf Corker after a corker of a run. And then the Mississippi State win being the second. And they kind of showed exactly why that was a big hurdle to get over in yesterday's game against Ole Miss. But uh, those are two indicators that this could actually be a special year for Kentucky. They took care of South Carolina the next week, and they were well on their way. A run of 40 by Smith has set up Louisville with one more chance to score. And the Wildcats are going to take the lead in the Governor's Cup Series. Go to 9-3. and three. Good tough running by Hall here late in the game. We saw Kentucky as we talked about week one against Central Michigan. That was a game they trailed by six near the end of the half. Gunner yeah. Hook came in, let a touchdown drive, and then it felt like Kentucky discovered its identity because they ran the ball nearly every play in the second half that game. Kept it going in that win, as you mentioned, over Florida, snapping the three-decade-plus losing streak. And they have been so good defensively and so effective on the ground. It's really been a special year for the folks in Lexington. 
Well, they have some special players on the defensive side, certainly led by Josh Allen. And then the identity became the offensive line paving the way for Benny Snell. And Benny Snell and every coach we talked to yeah. before week one, they said this is our most talented team. And look, you hear, you hear that every week one everywhere, right? This is the corrected uh, opponent projections, by the way, Northwestern, Penn State, perhaps for Kentucky. Everybody says that before the start of the season. Right. It was right with this team. This is Mark Stoops' most talented team. It was a well-coached regular season. It's been a well-played regular season, and too. And they, for the most part, have stayed away from the injury bug. Yes, they have. And so that, that allows you to have a great deal of success. And you know, looking back at that bowl, those bowl projections, if, if it indeed holds true that they play in the Citrus Bowl against Northwestern, that will be the second year in a row that Kentucky Northwestern will do battle in a bowl game because last year the Music City, which I had a, an opportunity to be, to be a part of that one, they took on Northwestern in that ball game. Hey, there's a play made by Josh Pascal. Boy, great to game. see him back on the field. Josh Pascal has been dealing with a malignant melanoma. He was diagnosed with that on the bottom of his right foot in July. He's still undergoing treatment. He had three surgeries, and he's being treated monthly for immunotherapy treatments, which are not as invasive as chemotherapy. But he returned to the field last week, got the start, made a tackle to a huge ovation against Middle Tennessee. And this young man has been an amazing example of perseverance for Kentucky. Got the JSJP decal on the helmets for John Slarman, the offensive line coach who's been dealing with cancer as well. And they just rave about Pascal. Everybody yeah. around this program, his attitude in fighting this. He had the respect of his teammates last year as a true freshman. And it was just a phenomenal athlete. And he had to, to deal with the, those complications as you just described. They're going to lose Josh Allen after this year, but then in steps Josh Pascal. So you talk about having recruited well and, and keeping it going. I think Mark Stoops is going to have a talented group again in 2019. False start, 72. Offense, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, Pascal, the Kentucky coach, has told us he, he really had to learn to walk again as he didn't walk for three months. He was on a scooter because of the cancerous melanoma on yeah. the bottom of his right foot. He had a bell on it, and apparently he would drive Cash Daniel crazy. He'd just keep ringing the bell when he <laughs> snuck up behind him. But he was lifting weights, working out, even went on the scooter, trying to stay in shape. And he is rewarded playing late in the year. Fourth down, McCormick. And it's caught but out of bounds by Fitzpatrick with 55 seconds to go. And one of the most lopsided games in the history of this series belongs to Kentucky, as will that trophy. It's going to make its way to Lexington, Kentucky. How sweet, right. how sweet is the feeling of beating your rival? Oh, it's sweet. There's no doubt about it. And, and when you can do it in this fashion, it, it makes it that much sweeter. There's Mark Stoops. There's Susan Lacks, Kentucky SID extraordinaire down in the field with him. Good for Slacks to get in the celebration. SIDs are some of the best people oh, we yeah. deal with. No doubt about it. And Susan is one of the great ones at Kentucky. Hug for John Schlarman from Mark Stoops. The best regular season, Andre, at the University of Kentucky in 41 years. Authored by that man and his team of Wildcats. Had a plan when he got there. Stuck to his plan. Didn't deviate. Recruited. And this is the result of 9-3 and three season with a chance with a bowl win to get to 10 wins. Mark Stoops was 10 years old the last time Kentucky won nine games in the regular season. He's a Wildcats head coach now, and his team was dominant. 56-10 the final. Kentucky gets the upper hand in the Governor's Cup rivalry. Yeah, it kind of felt like... This would uh, 
Not in this fashion, but Kentucky had the upper hand coming in, the momentum coming into this ball game. They stayed, kept their composure throughout, and a big win for the Kentucky Wildcats as they move closer to bowl season. Terry Wilson, 261, three scores through the air, plus one on the ground. Benny Snell ran for two. Kentucky wins it big, 56 to 10. For Andre Ware, our entire crew, Kevin Brown saying so long from Lexington. A lot more college football tonight. Chris Cotter has you now in the studio.